interval in the body case into plutonium during MIST. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, uh, remaining with the complication, let me show you my complication. So this was a 60 year female, you can see a list which is there and she presented with back pain for since one year with the, and with, with increasing since, since six weeks and there are two red flags, flags hanging as you can see, the BMI is 36 and she is the relative of the chief medical director of the hospital. So I have two red flag sign, a VIP patient and a obese patient. And the MRIs were, uh, other than the list tests, we didn't see much. There's some compression and that's it. Now this is you can MRI. And this is May 2019, just before the COVID stick uh, hit us and we planned for MISTLF. This is the intraoperative image and we, felt, we saw that 12 mm trial from posterior work we felt was the right fit. And we decided to use a Medtronic's Wave D expandable cage. If you're not uh, aware about this case, let me show you a slow video, small video just to make you also the Medtronic's Wave D cage is like any other cage, but it expands and the graft is filled after you have put the cage. So this is how the cage goes. This is a different patient, not this patient. And you put the cage and then you expand your, your cage. So the entire part of the cage expands and that is the time you can, you are able to put the graft. So the cage is still empty. You put the funnel and you put the graft. So it allows you to put a lot of graft and that is one of the advantages of the cage. Of course, you get the lordosis, which is which comes with the cage. So that this is how you put a small funnel and just pack in the graft. And uh, this is this is how the cage looks like once you have packed it. So this is the cage and it's filled with a lot of graft and most of the time it works well. So coming, this is just to make you aware how this cage works. Coming to our case, this was after expanding, this is, you can see the cage nicely in the microscope and this is the funnel was put and we just packed a graft gently but once I removed the funnel, I could not see the cage, the cage is, something is wrong and that is where you get a, your SCR and get your lateral x-ray and this is what you can see. So then comes the question, of course you pray, that is the first thing which you all do when you face with such a thing. What, what more to do besides praying? So we, we, of course, the first thing was, oh God, whatever, whichever God you believe in. Second thing is to and inform your anesthetic. Call all the blood which was available in the hospital of that blood group. Call your friend, the vascular surgeon, and who might be having a drink or who might not be free. But thank God, the first other thing which we did and due to our experience with lateral surgery, we went back and saw the, check the MRI scan. And that is where I had a sign of relief. And uh, and then what we did is, this is what we did. This, and if you realize this cage was put without the screws, okay. So what 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 has happened is, uh, so I will tell what has happened, but what we did is we put the screw first. So, th so that I can, uh, there's no way to remove this instrument first. There's no way you can do it. For two reasons, this expandable cage, it has already expanded, you cannot put it back. And it's too risky even to attempt it. So what we did is, we finished the surgery, put the screws from the back, and if you see on the side, there's a, a small cage I put on the lateral side, not in the center where the cage migrated. So there's a cage anteriorly and, and a cage from posterior, and then we, we did a, uh, we turned the patient and we removed the cage from the retroperitoneal approach, and thankfully, six months follow-up, she has done very well, but uh, due to COVID, I don't have a long-term follow-up for her. So basically, what has happened is before I, so this is, there are a lot of case reports to discuss that cage migration in my stillness is not very uncommon and there are a lot, some reports which talks about even a, a vascular complication. This is from Dr. Nene, he's a colleague in my hospital and he had a case where they're doing MIST lift and they lost the cage anteriorly. There's massive bleed, they just packed and came out. When they did the x-ray, they could not find the cage in l 5 s one the cage has migrated from there through the uh, through the arteries to the left coronary artery. So it was found in the left coronary artery. So, so what we believe is what happened is we put a 12 mm cage and we expanded it. So we did a anterior ALF release. That is what happens. So if we all know, and most of you are lateral surgeons, ALL release can can happen when your lateral surgery is not very uncommon. 
but there is no literature if you search literature which says even expandable TLF cage can do it. So, so that was the my message from this case that expandable TLF cage while getting expanded can lead to added increase of ALM. Surgeon must be aware of this rare complication which can result in anterior cage migration. So let me th let me leave you with these thoughts. A wise man learns from their mistake, but a wiser man learns from mistakes of others. So hopefully, me and Dr. Pimenta made you like slightly <laughs> wiser today. I'm ready for any questions, Sunny. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I know the Nene, Dr. Nene, well, <laughs> and I had, uh, uh, I saw his presentation, and uh, uh, that case had uh, previously had uh, infection. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a distractus yeah. case. So maybe the, so the, that's why in his case also, maybe we did distractus, the ALL was either slightly disrupted or it yeah. was not very intact. But we believe in this case, maybe we release the ALL from posterior, which is unthinkable, but that is yeah. what we believe. Yeah, in. I would mean, like to. Uh, talk about the Nene's case, that uh, that was a previous infection. So the disc and the uh, IBC were adhered. So that's another disc factor for the perforation of the cage in the IBC. And in that case, it moves to the heart and then uh, go to the, went to the lung. So, so but uh, when I look at your uh, trial X-ray, it already AAL was broken. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. We didn't realize it because, you, see, something which you never heard of, you didn't, don't think about it. So we, we went back and we felt putting a 12 women trial like that, maybe we have already released it. So that, that now we, and now of course you know, so when the eyes didn't see the, what the mind doesn't know, as the saying goes. So that was the idea of putting this case forward and mostly it is within a week or so it will get accepted in one of the journals we are already in the review process. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Shaman. It's a very uh, great case. I actually had a few um, of these perforations at the LL before and I can tell you, you just, uh, you just wait for all your pain and fear, right? <laughs> and the first thing you look is an MRI scan. My question is, after um, there's a defect down there, how do you, what do you do after that? You put a cage inside there. My concern is, what if I put a cage down there and then the next thing you know, the cage migrates out to the front again because you can see it's like a fish mouth. Or even the fusion, you know, because you can't put any bone down there because you come out. So what's your strategy in tackling that? So, so, so we had the same thing. So what I did is, if you see that image, there's suction which has gone and which I just felt where, where is the release. The release was in center. There's no, so normally, I don't know, but uh, in, at least in our case, the, the, the gap in the alien was just the center also. So my lateral was intact. So what I did first is put this, compress it. So what you do with a plate in front, front. So just compress it so that the tension of the ALL is restored. And then what we did is put a cage in the lateral, away from your uh, the defect, hoping that things go right. <laughs> because you are never sure. You just guess and you you try to predict that maybe I am right. And hopefully, fortunately for us, this case. Thank you. Uh, we, just to share, maybe we, we use a uh, surgical cell sling, like a surgical cell net, oh, okay. just to put it on the front so it becomes like a net. So it, 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 it covers the defect, like a little bone in the like cage, and then we compress it down. Great, 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 great. It's something I can use if hopefully it doesn't come to that in future. Okay, thank, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Anything? Okay. Thank you, Professor Sharma. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Professor Joseph Malouis.